father returned from China, he didn't go to San Francisco or New York City, the traditional Chinese settlements. He came here instead to rural Mississippi. In a Mississippi cotton picking Delta town, one dusty street to walk up and down. Mississippi in the early 1900s was a land of opportunity for Chinese. There was a wide gap between the white and black populations, a gap within which the Chinese could establish themselves as storekeepers. And that was a long step up from the back-breaking labor of a Chinese laundry. There was another even more compelling reason for establishing a business. The laws of the time said that the wife of a Chinese was classified by her husband's job. The wife of a laborer was herself a laborer in the eyes of the law. Chinese laborers had been excluded in 1882, and that law had been renewed every 10 years. But other Chinese could still come, and Chinese who were classified as merchants or as preachers or travelers could come. So setting up a store in Mississippi cleared the way for my grandfather to bring his wife and son to America. But no one said that life here would be easy. You work for 12 to 14 hours a day. Often, we many times, we get up early in the morning, about around 4 or 5 o'clock, to catch the early morning. Cotton chopping time, the people go to field work. If you don't catch that early business, then you missed the main good part of that business. Everything, you have to do it by yourself. Put merchandise on the stock. You're the floor sweeper. You're the cashier. You're the uh, manager. You were chop suey of everything. WJBR 1330, Greenville, Mississippi. I remember the life in one of those small Mississippi towns. We were balanced on the edge between black and white. In the middle of the night, I could hear B.B. King wailing from a black cafe behind the store. Rock me, baby. Across the street, Hank Williams from the white side of town. Jumbo line, a crawfish pine, a feely gumbo. They're not allowed the Chinese people go to white school. They're not allowed the Chinese people go to barber shop. They're not allowed the Chinese people go to the restaurants. They're not allowed the Chinese people go to the hotel. They're not allowed the Chinese people go to the even sick go to the hospital. My Aunt Annie was the first Chinese woman from Mississippi to go to college. But when she was a teenager, a member of the Board of Education told her that Chinese could not go to public schools. I sat there crying, and I was very angry and very mad. And I do remember sat, sitting there. It's very hard to sit there and talk to somebody, being a young person, and it's not 13 is not very old, and talking to a grown man and demanding that you be able to go to public school. Grandfather, he, in spite of all these conditions, he still encouraged us to go to school, get the best training possible, so that when we get out, we make our best effort to make a success here. Otherwise, well, go back to China and utilize our professional training there. My grandparents came to Mississippi like thousands of other Chinese families because they believed they could succeed here. It didn't have to be San Francisco or New York City. They preached the American dream that hard work would produce good results. Next, we'll see how that lesson was learned by the new generation. In Itabina, Mississippi, this is Sam Chu Lin, News Center 4.